Let's maul in the Central Committee. Let's cringe in the Central Committee. Let's bog in the Central Committee right now. Former President Donald Trump lost the 2020 election by a decisive margin. But a lot of people are still convinced he's going to be back in the Oval Office long before this term is up. Mike Lindell says he thinks President Trump will be back in office by the end of August. Do you believe and that? I don't, I don't, you know, we learn not to put any dates on anything, but all the Arizona audit has proven that it was stolen. Ned's coming to Georgia. I don't know where, what process they're what? in right now. What is she talking about? The Arizona audit has proven it's stolen. What? What are you talking about? Legitimately, what the fuck is she talking about? But it's fixed. It's going to all the other states and they're seeing it everywhere. I don't trust anybody who doesn't want an audit. I don't trust you. You don't want to. Let's shut these audits down. Why? Why do you want to shut an audit down? I've never Cost seen money. An <laughs> so what? Look, there's 50. Um, they've already done multiple audits. They've done recounts. They've done audits. There's nothing more to be done. Now you just have it, incompetent conservative grifters called cyber ninjas taking money and stealing money, and there's going to be no change. Percent of this country doesn't believe this 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 election was legitimate. Do you believe it was legit? In Georgia, I have videotape evidence of the woman running the count in the middle of the night. I also know that it was in the middle of the night that it flipped. Right? This state was won by they Trump. Were they were counting. They were not done counting. They kept counting. What are you talking about? This happens all just happening in the. What are you fucking talking about? Anything being re related to the election question equals it's being proven. It's akin to people who equate arrest with guilt. Ugh. I mean, and then what happened in the middle of the night? Whoop, it flipped. The state didn't flip in the middle of the night. What happened was the votes were counted and the results showed Georgia turned blue for the first time in 28 years. In response, Team Trump filed several lawsuits claiming voter fraud in Georgia. Then to prove that nothing shady was happening, the state counted the votes over and over again. There was a hand recount that happened in November and then another one that happened after that. Do you, do you think those were fairly done? No, I do not. Distrustful of all the official recounts. See, I, why don't you want to do an audit? Well, we did a two hand recounts already. In addition to the initial count. Do you think those, did you, did you think those were fair? No. Are these the first time you ever heard of it? Yes, they're believing the media. They, they don't think they. OK, so here's what's happening. In case you don't get it, like the hogwash shit is funny. But if you here's what's happening. The people they trust are saying lies. They don't trust me. They don't trust you. They don't trust Vice or CNN or MSNBC or Joe Biden or any Democrat. It doesn't, it's a genealogical problem for them. If we say it, they don't believe it. And the people they don't believe are outright liars. And that's new. There's always been a propaganda problem on the right. There's always been a lying and dissembling and tricking problem in American media. That's, I'm not trying to downplay that at all. But now they just say shit that's completely batshit. Not shaded by ideology, not lying by omission, outright fabricating shit, just making it up whole cloth on the most basic stuff like did the elections where they counted fairly. That's a change. Counts. Republicans across the country are demanding that they Derek, be allowed to conduct their quiet, own, Derek. quote, audits of the Don't results. Care. A real audit is a way of confirming that a count is accurate by randomly sampling paper ballots, tallying them up, and comparing it to the machine count. Instead, in Arizona, a company that does not have expertise in elections is searching for fraud by, among no, other things, using blue lights to look for bamboo in paper on the theory that ballots were imported from Asia. Election experts say this is not serious, but it's now the blueprint in other states. 
What I saw in Arizona is the model for, for Pennsylvania, any battleground state. In Georgia, nine people are suing to inspect the mail-in ballots in Fulton Come County. On, Mom. It's a majority black area that delivered a decisive win for President Biden. Okay, so here um, is the original complaint that we filed back on December the 23rd. Garland Favorito is a retired IT professional and says he's not a Republican and didn't vote for Trump. What were your concerns with the November 2020 election? Four senior poll managers uh, found what they believe to be counterfeit ballots uh, that they were handling as auditors during that, that audit. So this audit is going to look at just the absentee ballots. Why is the focus on the absentee ballots? It, it, it appears obvious from everything else that that's where the potential fraud is. And technically it's not an audit, it's really an inspection, but it's, it's just it's an inspection to look for the counterfeit ballots. Do you have any evidence that the ballots are counterfeit? From what we've seen from the images uh, that we, we, were, we were given uh, last month, they corroborate uh, the, uh, uh, at least some of the affidavits. Georgia's Secretary of State has previously refuted claims of counterfeit absentee ballots and other allegations in a letter he sent to senators in January. But he does say an audit in Fulton County could help promote transparency. Since January of last year, a group called the Center for Election Innovation and Research has partnered with the Georgia Secretary of State's office to consult on election security. But the group's founder, David Becker, says some Americans may not have faith in the voting process after 2020. Objectively, we had a more secure election. We had more paper ballots in states like Georgia, North Carolina, Virginia, Pennsylvania that didn't have paper ballots statewide in 2016. We had audits of those paper ballots. We had recounts of those paper ballots in Georgia. They counted every presidential ballot three times, three different ways. And yet we're seeing for the first time in American history, the losing candidate delegitimize the entire election. How would you describe this period that we're entering? So we're in the most fragile state that American democracy has been in, certainly since the 1960s, and probably dating back to before the 20th century. We now have people in this country, in a very closely divided country, who cannot conceive of the idea that in a closely divided country their candidate and their party might lose. And that's very, very damaging for election confidence, for legitimacy of governance and elections going forward. Republicans are using these lies to justify taking dramatic action. State lawmakers are rushing through bills that restrict when and how people can vote. People are calling for sham audits to get a chance to dig through already counted ballots. And even that isn't enough to get the most diehard Trump supporters to trust the process. How does what happened in November, the presidential election in November, affect how you think about future elections? Do you trust the election yeah, process? Not at this point. No. We will keep trust. fighting. I didn't even trust when we had the um, senator election. If we don't get rid of the Dominion voting machines or any kind of machine that's supposedly not connected to a computer, which they claimed Dominion didn't, but it did, <laughs> uh, if we don't get rid of those, we won't ever have a fair election again. They're so fucking stupid. I'm sorry. Hey, dumb lady. They counted the machines help count the ballots faster. And that, so, you know what you could do? You could take the ballots that the machine counted and count them by hand, which they did twice. What is your theory? The machine just counts the ballots faster! And then you can go back and take the ballots and count them slower by hand, which they did twice! What are you talking about? Paper ballots are secure because you can check the machines. You know what's not as secure? When you go into a voting machine that's just on the computer. Paper ballots, mail-in ballots are more secure! How do we know these auditors are keeping and maybe sharing databases of who voted for who and where they live? Because it's too hard to do that. I mean, maybe they're doing... I mean, that's... Oh, okay. Edith Fahid. Oh, okay. So, okay. Your question makes perfect sense. How do you protect a secret ballot? So, what we have when we vote... When we vote by mail... We have what's known as a privacy sleeve. 
We have privacy sleeves. All right. So the first thing you do, here you go. First thing for an absentee ballot is you have to fill out an absentee ballot application. We must have a signed application. Okay, so here's the application. The secrecy sleeve. And your ballot. Okay, so there's your ballot. You fill out your ballot, return it back to the secrecy sleeve. So it goes to the secrecy the sleeve. We... So the secrecy sleeve has no information about who you are. The secrecy sleeve goes into the outer envelope. All right. That one. We have now received your ballot back at City Hall. Once we have received it, we will scan your ballot in. And once your ballot has been scanned in, you may now track your ballot. And you can go on michigan.gov backslash vote, put in your voter information, and it'll give you all the information about your ballot that it was sent and then received by your jurisdiction clerk. And now after we have received the ballots, we store them out by the precincts and the counting boards. And we have to have in the individual boxes that we put them in, the ballots get sorted out. Once they are inside there, they are then sorted by precinct and by ballot number. Once your ballots have been received and they've been filed upstairs by order, we then bring them downstairs to our locked election room. There are cameras on the doors at all times, 24 seven. This room is being monitored. We take it inside our election room. The machines I'm walking past here are ones that are used on election day. These will be out in the precincts. They are getting ready right now with the supplies to go out in two weeks. So now a received ballot is brought into a, another room, secure room, where we then take the ballots that have been filed and sorted. We then look at them to make sure and we interfile them amongst the other ones from that precinct in the order by ballot. It is now the day before election day. We are getting ready to take the ballots upstairs. <clears throat> this is for a primary chat, which is why they're supporting sorting by party. They don't do that in a uh, normal election, but in a primary election, you support in a closed primary um, like they have in Michigan, I believe. They do. They sort by by party registered voter, right? So now that everything's taken, now now she's showing you what they do. All right, we're skipping ahead. Now your ballot is ready to be opened up. We have high speed letter. So in a opener. closed primary, the only people that can vote in a primary election are members of that party. So they need to ha separate Republican voters from Democratic voters because they are voting inside that party. That will be in with each county board. The county board will then put the ballots, someone in the county board will put the ballots inside the letter opener, and we turn it on. And now the envelopes are open. Now that the envelopes have been opened and we have confirmed that the right ballot is inside the correct envelope and they are in batches, we now get ready to scan. There is nothing on this screen that gives any information of what is voted for. All this is giving us is the quantity of ballots, not what is on the ballot. So now we are ready to scan. So there you go, Chet. She skipped over the most important part, but it's okay. We aren't technically closed. You don't have to be a registered member. You just have to only vote in one primary. Ah, uh, okay. But what if my sleeve is taken and replaced? I don't know what that means. What does that mean? You mean somebody has a bunch of secrecy sleeves? Yeah. So when those ballots are counted, they're counted. So that's a good question. The ballots are only counted in the presence of other people. There's not one person doing it. There are poll watchers that watch it all. God, everyone's so fucking stupid. Other than signature matching, comparing addresses, registration, what safeguards are there against fee people faking mail-in ballots? Um, so if you were to try to fail, fake a mail-in ballot, there's a real mail-in ballot happening. And so you would have duplicate ballots and only one vote would be counted at a time, right? So the first ballot to come in would be the one that would be accepted, right? 
if another ballot came in for the same person, it'll be noted as this person already voted. And so you would have a duplicate ballot. If you tried to send a bunch of ballots in, it would be immediately detected that there were thousands of duplicate ballots from all these different people. And that election would immediately be suspect. And that would be a situation where an attempted voter fraud was taking place and there would need to be remedial action. That's how you would know. Going over the audit, your ballot sleeve, like your mail, like the thing that you signed, that's been destroyed. That's gone. No one's auditing the outside sleeve. All we have are the ballots that made it through all the checks because the secrecy sleeve protects you. Anybody cannot look and see what you voted for because they take you take it out of your, your the outside envelope, the election mail envelope that you send it in, and they can't see who you voted for. And honestly, when they're count when they were removing those sleeves, there's millions of ballots. They're not going through and going, oh, Mike from PA, who did he vote for? Oh, let me take out his privacy sleeve and open that up and look at it. Ugh. They can't do that because there's a huge group of people all together with poll watchers watching. They check this and go, okay, this is Mike from PA's ballot. Is Mike from PA registered to vote? Yes, he is. There, we received his ballot check. They remove it. That gets passed on to somebody else who removes it from the envelope then there's a privacy sleeve and the privacy sleeve is put into a separate it's put at the ballot is put into a separate thing at no point can anyone see your shit and then later there's no way to put it back together there's no way to get, find your ballot and put it back with your envelope that once the ballot is is vetted once your vote is vetted through the system they're separated and there's no way to put them back together. It's impossible. There's no way for the auditors to go and look at them. All you have is a big pile of ballots that we have certified as good and that we have chain of custody over. We know when these ballots were brought in, when they were checked, when they were counted, who was in the room, where those ballots were then taken, where they were stored, and then when they, where they were given. There's no way for them to reconnect it. It's impossible. It's designed that way so that you remi remain a secret ballot, and nobody can see who you voted for. How oh, they flag some votes as suspicious. I like when a dead person votes by mail. I don't think the specific mechanism how they do that. Dead people are automatically purged from the voter rolls. And if a dead person tries to vote, they get... Say someone tries to... say you. So when you die, there's what's known as a death certificate. And that goes to all government agencies. They get a death certificate. I don't know if you know about, about this chat, but when you die, it's a pretty common thing. People die all the time. And we have mechanisms in place for that information to be spread throughout the government through formal means so that you like stop getting your social security check. You know, you stop getting, uh, you know, things sent to you when you're dead, you're fucking dead. All right. And one of those things they do is they remove you from the voter rolls. If somebody who's been deceived, been uh, has a death certificate out on them, tries to send in an absentee ballot request form, that gets automatically flagged. What if you mail it in and then die a couple of days before the election? That might be like five or ten people in the state, Derek. Um, depending upon when they died and when the certificates get out, that dead person vote might get counted, but they voted when they were alive, if that makes sense. What if somebody died from COVID between the original count and the recount audits? I imagine their vote is still counted, but could they mess that up? No, because there's no way to know whose vote is whose. Before we continue, chat, here's Joe Biden, 4th of July. What do you think he's doing, chat? What do you think Joe Biden's doing on the 4th of July? Mike. Thank you, dude. What is, what is Joe Biden doing, chat, on 4th of July? Come on, senators. Welcome to Boomers. How are you? We're well. How are you? Okay. Do you know what you like? Oh my gosh, I don't. Do you know what you want? I just. Uh, We're in the cherry capital of the world. I know cherry that, but I'm a chocolate chip guy. True chocolate chip. Plain I want a double chip. dip waffle cone with chocolate, okay. vanilla chocolate chip. Vanilla chocolate chip. We can do that. The motherfucker doesn't even. They're like, we're the cherry capital of the world. He's like, ah, fuck your cherry. I'm gonna have vanilla. I got two scoops. You got two scoops and a waffle cone with a plain chocolate okay. chip. No. Okay. okay. 14, dude. 14.58 on 20. 
1450 for two scoops what am i losing my mind did he buy other people money did he buy other people ice cream that i missed it Oh my gosh, thank you, Mr. President. No, thank you. Very good to leave. You can't come to Traverse City without coming here. God, they're so old. That is not $14 worth of ice cream, Chad. I'm sorry to tell you, that is ridiculous. Cherry ice cream sucks, and I love cherry. Okay, well, you can be wrong. Is he at Milk and Honey in TC? They are expensive. He's in Michigan. Um, fourteen dollars for one? I what? I don't care how good your ice cream is. Fourteen dollars for one cone? Get the fuck out of here! It's frozen milk. You can't dip a waffle cone, chat. Seven twenty-five a scoop is one hour of minimum wage labor. Biden's making a point. I think. Jesus Christ. We do politics here every morning starting at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific. You can watch us here on Twitch. We're the morning guy, the morning politics guy, politics frogs in every single day, same time, 10 a.m., day in, day out. And we carry you through your morning and early afternoon politics needs. And if you need more, Mike from PA, we have a YouTube channel. We talked about suburbs, the My Pillow guy, Ted Cruz. We talked about DSA. Amazing. Making fun of Tim Pool. Amazing. Look at all of these amazing videos. Get in there, watch them. We have me on Twitter. You got to follow me on Twitter, chat. I'm at 20,614 subs. That means I got like 40 followers on Twitter in the last day. You can do better than that. You can do better than that. Go follow us on Twitter. And of course, join the Discord, where we have an incredible community of left-wing streamers. We have left-wing community. We talk about the stream. We talk about politics. There's gaming content. It's a really awesome, supportive place. Direct action, mutual aid. And you can just let off some steam. And also, you can help produce the show. One of the things I do is I look at the links that are put into the news content suggest suggestions chat room on the Discord. Join the Discord, come hang out, and uh, maybe what you want me to talk about will be part of the next show.